Hello my friends and welcome, let's start from the military map update, let's go to the Bakhmut area and Ukrainian forces moved a little bit recently, just a few hundred meters or maybe even dozens of meters, but there is still the movement, it means that we are taking the ground, so it was yesterday and it is today. So the battle is ongoing for this natural obstacle, the river and the forest line over here. The fighting is really tough because Russia was able to send reinforcements to the flanks to reassure that the Wagner soldiers will be able to leave the Bakhmut city. For Russian regular army, the Wagner soldiers are just pain in the ass. And there was also the light movement towards the city, so it was yesterday and it is today, probably just a frontline correction. Even though for now there is not a huge movement from Ukrainian forces, but I am quite positive about the future scenario. Plus today some of the Ukrainian military officials confirmed that the Bakhmut operation will be successful for Ukrainian side. I think that after Wagner forces leave the Bakhmut city, we'll be able to encircle it. The regular Russian army is not that effective compared to Wagner's, that's why I do expect the encirclement of the Bakhmut city. As you can see, front lines started to collapse for them and we used just minor forces for the counter-offensive action in this area. If we switch on more data for the map, you may see that Wagner's are still in the city and on the flanks there are regular Russian army forces that started to run around three weeks ago. But now on the south, the 72nd Brigade was reinforced with the 4th separate motorized brigade and here 9th motorized brigade was sent to secure the perimeter. About the Wagner forces' withdrawal, Prigozhin today stated that they will finally withdraw from the Bakhmut on 5th of June, because it takes time for them to prepare the defense lines in the city for the regular Russian army. About the future Ukrainian counterattack, we have the important notice from Zelensky in his address to Ukrainian people today, later on we're gonna review it, so Ukrainian president stated that they've already decided the exact date of the counteroffensive operation of the Ukrainian army. He also greeted our soldiers who passed the training for this counteroffensive. And based on the data which is coming from the south, from Berdansk especially, and also from this area near Yurivka, where Russia recently lost around 100 soldiers in their barracks because they were targeted by Ukrainian long-range missiles. So based on this information, I do expect that the Ukrainian counterattack will start somewhere on the south. About the Russian territory, for example in Belgorod region, Shebekina village or the small town is constantly under attacks, there is the big Russian base and some industrial centers. Also Russia uses this town to put the missiles that they launch towards Ukrainian territory, that's why we also launch our missiles to target them. Today, unfortunately, we also have the bad news coming from Khmelnytsky. Recently, Russia started to launch more rockets and more drones on Ukraine. They performed several waves of attacks on Ukrainian territory and last night they targeted the Khmelnytsky military airfield. As it was reported by the local military officials, the runway was targeted, it was damaged and now under repair. Plus, five of the aircraft were damaged. I tried to find out what kind of the aircraft were there, I wouldn't say this information publicly, but I wasn't able to get that information, it's classified. The airplanes are very important for Ukraine nowadays, especially Suhoi Su-24 tactical bombers, because they carry the Storm Shadow long-range cruise missiles. Without those airplanes, we are unable to launch those long-range missiles. Probably then F-16s arrive, they will be able to carry those missiles as well, but for now, no. We still have to wait around 4 up to 5 months for the plane delivery. 
The Russian Legion of Freedom again published the photo on their social media saying that they entered the Russian territory. They also say that we should expect some awesome news in nearby future. Today there were several explosions reported in Sevastopol. The local authorities say that it's just the exercise of the Russian military ships. But we have great doubts about that because all of the ships are mostly in the Sevastopol harbor and they cannot fire anything inside. They have to go to the open sea for the exercise. The Ukrainian intelligence chief Budanov today announced the firm actions against the Russian military as the revenge for their strikes mostly on civilian objects. I wonder what it will be, but something will be for sure. This is Kiev today, the part of the Russian cruise missile that was shut down by Ukrainian air defense just landed on the street. Luckily, no one was hurt. The Ukrainian general Sirsky, who is responsible for the eastern flank of the front lines, says that soon Ukraine will go on a counteroffensive operation. He gave the special orders to prepare for that counteroffensive action. All right, the President Zelensky with his speech today with his address to Ukrainians. I'll try to translate. Uh, the timing is very important, he says. Uh, the timing for Ukrainian army to move forward. The decision has been made. It means that our president and our military command already know the exact date of the counteroffensive. Whether it will happen during the springtime, not sure about it because there are not many days left in May. La Repubblica published a very controversial article. They say that the G7 countries are working to provide guarantees for Ukraine. They will support Ukraine to enter the European Union, but not necessary with all of the territories. In this article, author speaks about the compromises that Ukraine should do to join the European Union or to get more help from our allies. La Repubblica says that allies will push President Zelensky to negotiate with Putin. Well, for me, it's not possible. Still, there's the little chance for it, but I don't believe in that. And why do I think that I'm right? Because Ukraine will get more military help from our allies this autumn. Abrams tanks, fighter jets and maybe long-range missiles. It means that our allies and the main ally, the United States of America, are working not for negotiations with the Russian regime, but working on the victory of Ukraine. So I disagree with this article. According to the researches and statistics done by the New York Times, Russians tend to drop the support of the war in Ukraine. It also means that they will support Putin's regime much less. Because even the most crazy Russian Z patriots, I call them Turbo Z patriots, understand that Putin started this war. So for Putin it's critical to stop this war as soon as possible. The best scenario for him is to control the territories that they were managed to take, but Ukraine will not stop and continue to fight for its lands. And with all of the military support from our allies, Russia has no chances in the long run. Unfortunately, because of it, this war may continue for many years. But if we just cease the fire right now, stop movement from the Ukrainian side and also Russia stops the movement, it will secure the status quo for several years, but in around 2-3 years, Russia will get more resources, they will learn their own mistakes and they will try to attack Ukraine once again. It's the never-ending story until Putin keeps his power in Russia. Not only Putin, but the military Russian command and all of the Putin's circle. The only way out from this war is to change the Russian regime 
and format the Russian Federation. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation in Ukraine. Now please press the like to this video and if you want to support my job, you may find some links in the video description just below. You may also support me on Patreon or on the sponsorship on this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your kind support and your help. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.